Okay, maybe I'll turn my video off so people don't see me. You can do that. Does yeah, that it happy? takes less bandwidth as well. Oh, hang okay, on. So How do you turn off going to present her assessment number one. Um, and uh, you can see the screen now. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, excellent. So you ready to go? Yes. Okay. I am. Okay, so this is um, my first mood board, Arts and Crafts Movement. Um, the layout I've chosen, I have forgotten the names of the designers, <laughs> um, but I'll do my best to, to remember some of it. Um, so if we look at image number one, I thought that was a, a really cute um, representation of the, I guess, filigree that you get in the Arts and Crafts Movement, um, but it's a modern... A more modern item obviously I don't think that they had um, those kinds of welcome mats during that time um, but it does use a very common font which I've got as image two that was very popular during that time as well mm -hmm. um, there's an artist I've forgotten his name um, but he did a lot of artwork for books and also for um, soft furnishings um, which we have as number four he was also in uh, i think session one or two william um, william morris yes your name? yeah william morris. Okay. um so that's an image that i used for the border around the outside i thought it just kind of framed everything nicely mm -hmm. um if we look at image nine that's also the morris chair which was a very uh, i guess revolutionary piece of furniture for that design period as well. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed a lot with the arts and crafts movement, there's um, strong use of colour. So I've got uh, on the left there some of the colours that were used and there's, they're often used together. It's not evident in the, the images three and nine that I've got of actually interiors, but um, it was mostly in lighting, stained glass, lighting and windows and also in soft furnishings um seeing image seven eleven and then four and five there um a lot of the furniture was timber there was a strong use of timber and exposed beams with the interiors um and with the furniture and i think that's that's about it for the arts and crafts movement okay so Let's um, get Emily to comment on that. Yep. Ooh, sound from Mrs. Sound. Feedback. <laughs> Emily, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yes, yeah, since you've seen a few mood boards, you can probably comment on that. Yeah, I think this is an excellent mood board. I think it, um, I really like the layout. It's really clean and crisp and I think it's really nice how you, um, Michelle, used the wallpaper um, underneath, like, to, you know, to use it as, I guess, the base of the whole mood board. And then over on the left, the colour um, options. And it's a nice variety of images you've got with the cushions and then you've got a font and then you've got, I like, three and nine that shows how the whole thing could kind of come together. Um, yeah, I really like it. Okay, thank you. So what would you improve here, Emily? Um, I don't know, I, I really, I think it's a really good job. Um, I probably could probably add a couple of things to um like when i look at it mm. i think i i it it's really clean and and i get an idea but it doesn't evoke probably as many moods or things that it could do mm -hmm. um maybe a bit maybe a bit more um yeah. and yeah and uh, yeah i Apart from that, I, I, I think it's just really good, Polina. Yeah, it's a good mood board. It really represents arts and craft, and we haven't seen the arts and craft 
um, yet uh, with the student submissions that was lovely for me to see. Um, what I would improve here is maybe reduce the size of the color swatches uh, because it yeah. shouldn't take so much room. Uh, maybe reduce the amount of this border because it takes so much room again and maybe have more images placed instead. Yep. Okay. Yep. And um, I would also want to see the swatches of the real material like fabrics, you know, wood, uh, uh, metal, brass, whatever relates to that particular period. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. To make it more three-dimensional and make it more, you know, tactile looking, even like if you do it by hand or you scan the piece of, you know, fabric and just place it onto the software and that would be yeah. good. Okay. It's okay. Great. And maybe just place it a little bit more randomly. Okay. Do not yeah. have it so well organized because mood board speaks for itself. It's mood, you know, yeah. it's the feel of it. It's how you actually... You know, this is your kind of a inside feeling of of that particular period. Makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. So kind of throw it in a little bit more. Yes, and I totally agree with Emily that there is a good range of elements you presented, and that it's a real good selection of elements as well. Um, just small improvements, I think, will can tweak it better. Yeah. So let's yeah. have a look at the mood board number two. I'm just going to share it with you guys. So I'm going to share another screen. Okay. So now, guys, you should be able to see another mood board. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Are you ready to go, Michelle? Yes. Yes, I'm ready. Um, hopefully, my son can keep occupying himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this one, I, I did do a, a similar layout to the first one. I liked how I used um, a piece of art from the design period as the background to kind of, I guess, set the mood of the mood board. Um, so in the background, it is a, a painting by an artist not done during the Bauhaus movement. Um, it's a, a modern painting, but it is based on the shapes of our house the the form over no function over form was um was a big movement there so you get a lot of oddly shaped things that really were minimalist and really simple and and just did exactly what they were supposed to do um for example this chair number eight down the bottom um it's a very very simple design and uh it's just bent i think uh not aluminium some kind of metal um, that's just... Yeah, it's a stainless steel tube. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like like um, one of the chairs, I forgot, the uh, designer again um, from, from one of the earlier sessions um, where they just use leather straps and, and the stainless steel um, just for really simple... So the that's name of the designer, remember, guys? Emily, can you help us? Um, of sorry, of which image? Uh, number eight. Ah, that's um, Ritfield. No. Is it Ritfield? No, it was. Um, no, it was. Um, oh, I don't remember. But the designer with the leather, remember the one you mentioned just now? What's the name of that designer? We can see on the image one. Yes, that, the same one with the chairs there. So what's his name? I've forgotten. The I will write a script for the next it's presentation. Remember, guys, it's a Vasily chair. Ah, uh, yes, oh, the Vasily yeah, chair. Vasily. Yes. That's right. Good work. Right. Yes, go on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the image one, it's... Um, I, I liked that one because it has a, a few elements. It, I think it is actually a, a modern um, take on the Bauhaus uh, elements as well. Um, same with image number five. It's just very minimalist, um, very simple. And image 10 down the bottom as well. They, they use lots of um, large windows, open spaces, um, 
lots of glass and and metal and a bit of timber there but not as but not as much not as much as much as this movement um they were very um what's the word used a lot of geometric uh motifs so with uh well i've used more curved ones in in this mood board not of the the geometric kind of angles um but you can see curves through image three, six, and eight there, and also on the, the glass table down the bottom, which is another iconic um, design from the Bauhaus movement. Um, number seven there is is a very, uh, what's the word? It's a very obvious Bauhaus font. I think it is actually called Bauhaus, and I've used that font as well um, for my name and the description of the mood board in the bottom left. Um, yeah, I think I think that's about it for the Bauhaus movement. The the main um, idea of all of the designs is really function first, and then the form takes place as as simple as possible to that's do what it's meant. Right. Yes, um, as you noticed, Michelle, that the Bauhaus movement actually they have everything in geometric. So yeah. the three main geometric figures which established any concept in Bauhaus were triangle, yeah. square, and the circle. Okay? And they only use three primary colors. Okay? Yes. And this is very typical yeah, of a Bauhaus to use black, white, and yellow. Yes. Now, the elements you found here, they're all well suited for that particular concept. And the font, as you notice, is, is exactly the font which was created in Bauhaus. Obviously, the one you used on the computer, it's a modified version of it. So it's not as clean and nice as it was designed to be because it's yeah, right. computerized. But this, yeah. is the, this is the essence of Bauhaus, and I really like it. You really captured it. And I actually don't mind squares here. Pardon? I don't mind the way you organize the mood board. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Very, uh, I think um, we're thinking back to, to the comments from the previous one. I can see with this one now that it does look a little bit a little bit bare. Um, and, and it probably could have used a little bit more uh, of the other uh, geometric shapes and, and a bit more color. Um, because they are two big parts of the Bauhaus movement and I've, I've neglected them a bit with this mood board. But I really appreciate that you use the Bauhaus as the movement and uh, for your mood board as an inspiration because it's yeah. one of the strongest influences in design. And to be more precise, Bauhaus School was the first school in the world, the School of Design. Yeah, yeah. So when you look at everything they designed there, the rest of the finding which you have now in the shops in our day-to-day um, -day life will make more sense. So I would yeah. encourage you guys to read about it, watch more videos and documentaries about the teachers in my house and the techniques they were using the teaching and the books which were written. They had so famous um, the color scientist and artist, uh, very well known. Uh, his name is... Um, <laughs> Oh, God. Have a blank <laughs> moment, like you did. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I'll come back to that. Um, he, he even has his uh, pieces in the National Gallery of Victoria um, exhibited. So he actually developed the whole concept of uh, color theory as well and color illusion. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, uh, Vasily, uh, famous artist and famous designer, and etc. So many of them were from their house. So it's a good mood board. It has an essence to it. But again, only one thing I would want to mention is maybe the tactile things. You know, a little yeah. bit of a real thing happening, like a you know maybe metal, maybe something else, maybe wood and yeah. etc. Okay. Yep. Yep. Other than that, good job. I already looked at your files and they uh, look good. So well done on your first submission. Thank you. Excellent. So um, now 
we'll get back to Emily. So Emily, what was your question? <laughs> yeah, so I'm up to assessment four mm -hmm. and I just, I just feel it's a bit vague, um, the instructions. I just wanted to check. I understand there's the nine journal entries that we need to submit. Um, but then it goes on to talk about the e-portfolio as well. And, I mean, it's my understanding from earlier in the course, we talked about how it's good to do as many activities as possible, but we're not going to be marked on them. So we, if we did miss some here and there, then that was okay. Um, I'm just, yeah, it just, I just feel it's a bit vague, the instruction. I know we have to upload nine journal entries, but what exactly else do we need to do? That's my question. So you can see the assessment number four is open up here and um, just trying to find out the words which will particularly... Okay. So here in the point one, if you have a look at it, it says uh, personal uh, journaling with a minimum of nine entries. Yeah, right. As indicated in the self-directed session plan. So journal yeah. entries are to contain text, images, uh, critical inquiry, development of Approximately referenced this. Yeah, so I, I've got that, that's fine. Yep. But it's the next one, number two, I just feel it's a bit vague. So, materials and resources are to be arranged, sorted, and filled in a manner that allows ready access to the material to inform future work and share with colleagues as required. Okay, so the following will need to be collated in your ePortfolio. To the goal, scan the file your final submission in your portfolio. ePortfolio to be arranged in a manner that allows ready access to material to share with colleagues. Okay, now, do you know that um, feature we have in Mahara in ePortfolio? It says inspiration. Yeah. So if I take you through that, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go to um, Mahara and Nipotoli, and I'm just going to show you where you can actually organize and how you can actually organize um, your uh, ePortfolio, the way you can share it, okay? So once again, I'm just trying to open up. So I guess I'm just going to share the screen with you. Um, this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So first of all, um, just a quick introduction. How to get to uh, ePortfolio and how to get to Mahara. So Mahara and ePortfolio is pretty much the same thing. When you get to the main page, what you see on the screen now, it says Martin in the, on the left top corner, you need to scroll down. And here's your link, how to access, please click here to open the car as well. So I'm going there. Okay. So in that particular link. Hello. Someone's got a lot of noise in the background. Yes, it's very confusing. Okay. Okay, I've done it. Should be better now. Okay, just again. Just going to mute another participant quickly. Okay, now, so in this um, particular one, when you go to your portfolio, okay, you can basically create a, see, you have your pages and collection. So when you go to collections, Okay, that's where you can create a new collection with the images which you can share with the group. Okay, this is what I would imagine is required for that particular assessment. Okay, so if we look at that assessment again, what it's required here, it says material and resources to be arranged, sorted and filled in a manner that allows ready access to the material to inform future work and share with colleagues as required. 
So you need to do the following. Scan and file any of your work you deem suitable for your e-portfolio. Scan and file your final submission in your e-portfolio. So basically, when you're selecting those nine entries, as indicated, okay, um, you can share the images in folders on e-portfolio, okay, by creating the collection. So I'm just... Um, like I'm just going to create the collection now and I'm just going to call it collection one and I say assessment four, collection one, assessment task four. And um, then I do next edit collection pages. And then I can create different pages. Okay. So um in those pages, so you can see here now, collection one, it appeared here. And we can now go to edit and we can add some more pages. So I'm just trying page bar, save. Okay. So that's collection here. Okay. Copy collection, what's this mean? Pages already in collection pages. Drop page names and from the add page to collection or tick the pages. Okay. So you go to the pages and you can find those pages and drag them into the collection board. Okay, so we go to the any of the pages. So say for example your assessment task three. Okay, and see in each assessment as well, you have your inspiration. So in your inspiration, you can add any images as well. And so when you do that, so if I come back to portfolio, okay, you can actually share it with the group. So if we just, I'll just put you through the steps of how to create, create the pages again. So you, at the first step, you have create page. So you go create the page and now we're going to do assessment task number four. Okay. Um, so just sort of a text. Then we can edit layout. So we're going to leave the page. Okay. Think how you can arrange the different layout of your page and make whatever style you want. You go save. Okay. Then you can edit the content. See here you have your journals, etc. Emily, you see that? Yeah. And then you can do your journal entry in any cell and etc. Okay, so um, go save, and there you can type your journal entry, or you can um, take it from other pages you've already created. Okay, so configure that. Okay, okay, and etc. So when you finish with this, okay you can actually done and it will look like a website to you. Okay. And then when, I, you, then when you finish with the whole collection and with the whole the images, okay, make sure that you share it. Okay. And you need to share it, not just with me, but with some other students, you can share it with Casey if you want, she's in your group just by typing her name. Okay. Yeah. So with the with this assessment four, we don't submit it the usual way, like via the, um, you know, via the assessment submission, uh, you know, place where we have for the last few assessments. We just have to do this, upload it to the e, e portfolio. So when we go to the, if we go back to the page, how to submit your assessment. Um, so if we go back to that, um, Martin, then we go to our um, topic. So uh, submit assessment. If we go here and we go assessment number four, submit assessment. I would assume yeah. all you give me is just to share on the Mahara. That's it. The link. Okay. Because that is what it's required. It's actually required for you to go and uh, do it through ePortfolio. 
So okay. as it says here, like I'll just say, uh, share the description of the assessment with you again. Okay. So you should be able to see that. So have a look at this at point number five. The URL of your ePortfolio can be included in the Microsoft Word document and uploaded to Study Smart. Okay. So basically, what you uploaded to that assessment um, onto the uh, Study Smart, which they call Martin page, as you normally upload your assessment, you just put a uh, Microsoft Word, uh, Word document with, um, with the link to your ePortfolio. With the link, okay. Yeah. So, and and with the um, e portfolio, we're just uploading the nine journal entries. Yes. And then, if there's any other activities that we've done over the course, then that's fine. But like, do we have to go and do something, especially with all the activities, though, or okay. not? If you have a look at the point number three here, it says journal prompt activities have been provided in weeks. So you can choose those yeah. weeks, and as far as I can see, three, three. So well, actually, there's only nine. nine. That's right. So you basically need to go back to those weeks, 6, 10, 16, etc., and 44, it can, and complete those activities for those nine journal entries, okay, and put them on ePortfolio. However you want to okay. do it and organize it, it's totally up to you. I encourage you to spend a little bit more time on it and make it look beautiful because the simple answer that you can export it into the PDF file, you can export it onto the website, and you can have as your portfolio ready to go. Yeah. Which is a real good idea. So you don't need to have a website builder or anyone to do that because you've already done it beautifully in ePortfolio. If you need to learn more about Mahara and ePortfolio, you go to the link, um, on the students hub, you know the, the hub? Yeah. You do? Okay. So I'm just going to share it quickly with you. So I'm just doing a new share. Okay. And we'll just have a look. So you can see that page, uh, the Martin Lab page, the first entry. Okay. And um, they have the hub there on the bottom somewhere. Um, student Identifier, Imahara ePortfolio, oh, I'm serious. Hmm, somewhere my courses library. Ah, oh, Student Support Services, Resources, and it's all in there, how to use everything and how to call someone and, and ask the questions. Because it's really, it's a, it's a separate session. Once again, you had session two in your subject, which is about E portfolio and Mahara. So look through that session again how to use it. There are some video resources as well on the Martin website, okay? Yeah. All good. Okay. So is it clarify your question? Yeah, I, I think so. So as long as it's just the nine journal entries that I have to organize on the e portfolio portfolio just as we've been through if not it's not all the other activities from the whole course no and like, there are particular sessions which are specified in the document those number of sessions yeah okay okay thanks Paulina thank you no worries okay um, so we have other students on board guys uh, it's nice to see you on board it's we have um, Evgeny and we have Shippy. Do, you, do I pronounce your name right, guys? Uh, mine's pronounced Shippa. Shippa, I'm oh, sorry about that. It's the first time. That's right. Seen, yeah. Um, That's okay. I've just been listening. Um, I just wanted to know, just for this assessment that's due, the digital folder, I still, I'm a bit, um, yeah, not sure on how to do that one. <laughs> so the assessment task number one, is that what you... Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly share it with you. I have 10 minutes left. Would you just be aware of that? Okay, no worries. Okay, so can you see assessment task number one? Yep. Okay, excellent. So you have a question about the digital folder, correct? 
Yeah. Okay. So what you basically need to do is to collate your materials in systematic order and tag them. Okay. So when we say in the systematic order is something that when you um, select the specific folder for the specific work, and uh, you collate all the material in that folder. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share one of the students' um, folders organized perfectly for you so you can see what it looks like as an example. And then I'm going okay. to explain how it was done. Just a second. Let me just take Jessica's. Maybe. Okay, this one. Okay. I might just grab Emily's. Um, okay, here and do a new share quickly with you. Or maybe even Michelle's. So we can have a look at Michelle's. Okay, so this is Michelle's. Okay, so this is Michelle. She just uh, presented her assessment task number one, and this is how she organized. So, Michelle, are you still with us? No, I can't hear her. So, yes, 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 I am. Yeah. Okay, Sorry. do you want to <laughs> explain how you organized your folder since you're here? Yes, sure. Um, I, I organize my folders in, in two ways um, because um, I find my brain works in two different ways sometimes. So, um, hang on, if we can scroll down. So the first way I organize the images um, is into specific assessment and session tasks. So with this image here, it's for assessment one and it's part of the arts and crafts movement. So I saved it into a folder in assessment one um, titled arts and crafts. Um, then scrolling down to the next image, um, when you right click on the image, you can uh, select an option for get info. I don't know if it's different for PC, but this is on Mac. Um, okay. Sorry, are you just using, like, is this just on your computer? So this just is just on my computer, yeah. Okay. Um, right. So just right clicking on the images um, and selecting get info, it brings up this um, window on the left of that okay. image there. Um, and in the comments section, that's I, I go straight into putting it referenced properly so that um, when creating a reference list later, I just have to right click on the image and it's all there ready done for me. Um, and then in the top section here, you can add tags and I just type um, whatever I think is relevant to the image. So um, Morris chair, chair, lounge, arts and crafts, W Morris um, were all things that um, I can then later search for and, and it'll bring up all images that um, are relevant. Okay. Um, the second way that I then stored the images in the, the next um, image down is also um, from an earlier assessment task we were required to create um, like inspiration images folder, um, I think at session two. Um, and so I've just copied all of those images into a new folder in that folder. So inspirational okay. images, theme, arts and crafts and have them there as well. Um, so I don't have to go back and search through previous assessments to find the folder I'm looking for. It's, um, it's also in just a, a general all images folder. And then once they're copied, they've already got all of the tags um, and the references as well, because um, I did that earlier in the process. So that's that's just what works for my head. Yeah, that's um, well done. Yeah, good job. Also, you remember that you can tag them by color in on Mac as well. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Does it answer well, I've just I've just got a normal PC, and what I've just been doing is um. Like, like you, I've created a folder with, like, you know, assessment task one, and then I've, I've gone from there using different um, photos. So, say, 
from the 1880s mood board that I did. I put all the photos in there. And then from that one, I created a new folder saying um, living room um, and then colours and doing it that way. Yeah. Um, I haven't works. actually referenced everything, though. Am I supposed to reference everything for Mike? Um, um, for your assessment, you're supposed to reference 